Hey everyone, good morning. This is Mitchell Dillman with LoftFurnitureHowTo.com. Welcome to my shop. I came in on a Sunday to make up for a little lost time yesterday, and I was working on several projects today, actually. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to bring you guys along and show you how to make the perfect miter cut. We're working on a... Here, I'll switch cameras and bring you over here. So we're uh, we're out here working on table, custom coffee table that we started yesterday. In fact, here, let me grab that. It's made out of a little burnt oak tree that was growing over there next to the lady's house in Parkside. And we put all this epoxy resin into it yesterday. Uh, I haven't had a chance to sand it off this morning, but I was going to start in on making the steel base for this which is going to require cutting some miter cuts. So thought it'd be a good time to sit here and talk about the miter cut. <laughs> Give you the lowdown on all the angles. So uh, what is a miter cut? Before we start talking about how to make the perfect miter cut, let's talk about what a miter cut is, actually. The most common place you see a miter cut, you probably have one right there next to you in your house. If you look at the doorway or the door, look at the case molding around that door. And up at the top of that case, you'll see it make a corner like that. Like that. That is a 45 degree miter cut right there. Now, that's the most common place you see them. You, you also see them in picture frames. Every picture frame has four corners which make the 45 miter cuts what's makes making those corners they're really used to hide the ingrains in wood so you make a turn and keep chasing that around and most people think of a miter cut in terms of 45 degrees in fact let me get over here and we'll talk about different miter cuts because here's another example of miter cut but this one is set up on a 36 degree. So let me get over here and we'll show you some, uh, talk about the, the angles. I want to come in right here. Hey gang, got six live viewers. How are you all doing? Thanks for stopping in today. Um, soon enough, we're going to figure out how to chime in and let you all interact here. We're still learning all these buttons. There's so many different ways now to do these live events. We've got Live events on YouTube, hangouts, helpouts. Uh, so I'm still uh, experimenting to figure out how to best do this. Let's talk about these angles. When you're working with angles, you got several different tools. I'm going to turn this around so I can make sure I'm in the camera. Get all these tools out over here. Got a carpenter square, and obviously this is designed to be a perfect 90. I'm just going to go over these tools real quick. Carpenter square, this is what's known as a speed square. This is an angle finder that you can use in combination with your speed square to find angles. And this is what's known as an angle finder, a true angle. And it's actually... We've got all the angles set up right here, so you can just adjust this to whatever angle you're working with, lock it in place, and it'll actually show you right there what the angle is. So that's a lot of talk about angles. When you're, when you're working with any kind of miter cut, there's nothing more than two angles that come together. Just like we said a minute ago, these just happen to be a 45. You can use your carpenter speed square to double check that. You can see right here, this carpenter speed square is a perfect 45. This is a handy tool, guys. I use this in uh, everything. Mathematical equations, geometry, 
It's how what makes the world spin. Let's talk about that. Everybody knows the circle is 360 degrees. Half of that is 180. I should have written that down here, and we're going to work with this one up here. 180 degrees. Carpenter speed square. A carpenter square set up on a 90. So you're working with a quarter of your 360 degrees. You draw that out real quick. So we know that that. is 90 degrees. Half of 360 is 180, half of 180 is 90 degrees. And it keeps breaking on down to the 45, which is half of 90. That's your 45. Gang, if you want to have a lot of fun with miter cuts, you can get out your calculator and take 360 degrees and start dividing it. If you divide it by 4, obviously we've already talked about that. Divide it by 8, 45. If you're, but, to, but again, you're going to want to deal with the one, 180 degrees. So forget what I just said. Take 180 divided by 4. Take divided by 5, and you'll get 36 degrees. So 180 divided by 5, 36 degrees. That means you're going to have five pieces to come all the way back around. Here's an example of that. We've got five of these cut on a 36 degree angle. Four, four cut on a 45 will make your square five. Your octagon six is going to be 30 degrees. So take 180 divided by six. I believe it comes out to 30 degrees. So if you cut six pieces, 30 degrees, you'll come all the way back around, just like we've done here with five. And again, four pieces cut on a 45 makes your square, or your rectangle, or whatever. So let's go ahead and talk now about what makes the perfect miter cut. Speaking of that, let's, before we do that, let's talk about these. Anytime you're joining two pieces, like we've shown you here, five pieces, in order to make these ends meet, these edges, they have to be cut on the same degree. And as you can see, this is that. 36 degree miter cut, and this is a 45 degree miter cut. If I can find my tape measure, you'll see the difference in that. The steeper the angle, the longer the surface. So, with all that said, the easiest way I know to make a perfect miter cut to have the proper tools. And it used to be that you could use a, a miter box, which is a simple wooden box. And I have one somewhere, and I went to looking for it this morning. I couldn't find it. I was going to show you, but uh, it's been so many years since I pulled that thing out, I'm not even sure where I have it. But a miter box is set up to give you a 45-degree angle, and you do it with a handsaw. You set your piece of wood down into the box, and it aligns your saw to make that perfect 45. But gang, with the modern tools, it's much easier and much quicker. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate real quick right here using one of my miter saws. This, is, this, was a, this one's called a compound, sliding compound miter saw. We'll use it real quick to demonstrate a couple miter cuts. Now these saws 
have a gauge or a it's the same thing we were just talking about with our degrees it shows a right down here I know you can't really see it but you have the ability to turn your saw relative to the fence to whatever angle you want and this saw will track all the way around to a 55 actually on the right hand cut most saws will go up to about a 45 which is right there this one you have the ability to go either direction if I'm not careful I'm gonna knock some stuff off my table so let's set this up on a 45 and talk about a couple of key factors here all these chop saws this is a chop saw because you pull it down and it chops this one slides as well it's a sliding compound miter which means it will actually bevel cut at the same time you're making your angle cut and that gets into compound miters that's a whole nother lesson today we're just dealing with a simple miter cut so you set your saw now the trick to making a perfect miter cut is to make sure once you've established what angle you want that everything is both flat and tight to the back fence otherwise this angle it really doesn't mean anything so this and flat is critical to making your your angle let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna reverse this around we're gonna make a couple quick cuts here this is a 45 coming this way Now you see that's the opposite. To make it work that way, you'd have to roll it over. So we'll go the opposite direction to get the other the other miter. Now I'm going to take it right to that inside point. Uh, cut a little piece like that's going to so there we have a 45 and a 45. We cut three more of those, it'll make a perfect square. Again, that's that's using a compound miter saw to cut wood on a miter cut. But today I'm actually working to set up over here and start welding. I want to use my metal cutting band saw, and we'll show you how I make a perfect miter cut using that. So hang on one second, and we'll set up over there. Actually, I gotta measure those out real quick and we'll talk about uh, talk about how we do that. Let me move this saw and we'll use this same work area here to talk about these. All right, so let me pull that tabletop back out. We've got a coffee table we're working on here. I've got specific dimensions that we're going to make this overall base. Once I've sanded this down, this come back Friday, by the way, and we'll be putting this should be finished up. I'm going to be welding the legs this week, doing the finish on this top, and if everything goes well, we'll be putting it together this Friday in our live show. So uh, we already know what our dimensions are for this tabletop. We're going to want to table that's 44 inches long and 24 inches wide and this piece of wood is actually a little narrower and a little it will be a little shorter than that once we clean it up and cut the ends but we're going to design and weld up a steel base now I've already started cutting some of these I'm just going to lay them out on top of it once this is done they're going to be underneath it but for this demonstration today we'll lay these out. Now both of these have already been cut with a 45 degree miter cut from long to long is our overall width. That's where we get our 24. 24 inches. So that represents the one end. We're long to long on both of these. And to make this work perfect, to make it work perfectly, 
a key element to this is making sure that all your pieces are cut identical, or your two opposing pieces. So there's our 24s. We're going to go 44 long. We've got one of those cut here, and we'll go ahead in a minute and cut the other one. Again, this is basically going to be similar to a picture frame, just done out of this 1 by 3 steel. So we'll go ahead and lay out this last piece and talk about how to make this perfect cut. One way on these 45s you can do it is, is it starts by making a nice mark. If you've got a nice mark to start with, you know, you've got something to follow, and you can, even though your saw's got a gauge on it, just make sure that you can double check and make sure you're cutting that perfect 45. And this saw, I'm going to cut it this way. We'll mark this one. Now we know we want to go long to long, 44 inches. So I've marked that to where it's going to cut right off the edge. And then we'll pull our 44 inches. I already cut these down a little bit. By the way, we got to thank our friends at King Metals. This is steel we're getting right from kingmetals.com. So any of this stuff, you guys can go to their catalog or go online and order your metal from kingmetals.com. So we're marking 44. Now, gang, we're going to jump back over there to the metal cutting bandsaw next. I'm going to switch cameras, and we'll meet you over there. You know, I have an example. I'll show you those in a minute. This is my Ellis metal cutting bandsaw. We got it from our friends at tricktools.com. Be sure to go check out their website. They've got some of the best fabrication tools on the planet. And get over there and say hi to Bruce Van Zandt for me. Thanks, guys. So this saw is designed to make perfect miter cuts over and over. There's many of these different types, and, and, and they're all good saws, but this is probably one of the best metal cutting saws on the market. And it's going to be tough for me to show you this, but it's, it's very similar to the saw I showed you over there. It's got the same gauge right back here that we can adjust this all the way up to a 50 degree, going both directions. So we already know we're cutting on a 45 today, so we'll pivot this around. We're going to set it right on the 45, lock it in place. And then grab our stock. Now, we've already made a mark on here. So we're going to use it to just double check that we're, we're lined up perfect. You can see now this is very similar. We've got a backstop and a flat surface. So we want to make sure that our stock is both Level and flat to this surface and tight to the back to the backstop for the fence. That's critical to making a perfect miter cut. Now I'm just eyeballing to make sure I'm lined up over my line. We're gonna lock it in place. And then it's a matter of setting it. Let it go. All right, it's as easy as that. 
There's our little 45 cutoff. And by the way, on a 245, your run or your run and your rise will be the same. So this is three inches. And this, the run, I'm holding this. The run is three inches and the rise is three inches. And we're going to go ahead and release our stock. Even though we marked it once, I'm going to go ahead and double check our measurement. It's like my granddaddy used to say, you measure twice and cut once. And if I can find my pencil. <laughs> Forty-four inches to the long. Gonna get over here and make sure we're lined right up to our mark. Peek over the top. Think about this top. Here we go. Just that easy. Perfect 45 degree miter cut. So we'll take this piece, we'll just cut. And I'll meet you back over there at the table and we'll line this up underneath that. All right. So this is the piece we just cut. You can see it'll fit real nice right there. And we'll be able to weld these four pieces together to make the framework that goes underneath this base. And then we'll add our legs. And you can come on back next week and see the whole thing. Real quick, before you go, before we call it a day, this is one of the sets of our legs. And you can see there's a lot of angles going on in here. Now, most of these are called compound miter cuts. That's where they, uh, they run two directions, a flare, compound miter cut, compound miter cuts. But right here is another example of a regular miter cut. You can see... Flat angle. That's a miter cut right there. So they're really all over. You can use uh, miter cuts to join anything. I sure appreciate you all taking time this morning to join me. Let me see if we got any questions. I got 16 viewers. This is pretty cool. Thanks, guys, for joining me this morning. I know you probably got a lot of better things to do, but uh, hopefully this has been somewhat uh, educational. If you've got any questions at all, be sure to email me, Mitchell, at logfurniturehowto.com. Uh, come see us next Friday. We'll be putting this table together live for you. Shoot me any questions you've got. We really want to see what projects you're working on. I'm even, even looking to feature your work on our weekly show. So. Shoot me an email or even give me a call. We can talk about it. And I want to see what you're working on. Thanks again for stopping by. This has been Mitchell Dillman with LogFurnitureHowTo.com. We'll see you again next week. No, it is this week. It's Sunday. We'll see you again later this week. <laughs>